On the previous episode of the RX-7 series, we finished building the Ford Explorer Diff at Tier E with the help of John and Aaron. The Explorer Diff has undergone some serious changes and upgrades. In this episode, it's time to put them in. Okay, so side by side, obviously, we can see the Explorer Diff is much larger, but it's also an aluminum casing, so it's lighter. I'm pretty sure it's lighter anyway. Um, just by picking it up, we can tell. So a couple pounds at the very least. This has got this bar on top that's made out of cast iron as well as the actual housing as well. So even though this is smaller, it's heavier and it requires that PPF bar, which connects all the way up to where the factory RX-7 transmission used to be. So this thing is complicated for no reason. Honestly, I'm gonna say it. This is not complicated. It's just large uh, and it's very strong as we saw when we were building it. So now we're gonna put this in the car and unfortunately they're both still very heavy. With the drive shaft, there has to be some sort of like slip in the drive shaft because it's got to move in and out depending, you know, with suspension travel and, and, and everything. Um, the diff moves, so you have not only your U-joint that rotates in almost any direction, you have to have some in and out. And in this case, this is the one we made for the S2 Trans with the RX-7 diff, uh, made by Full Torque Solutions. Um, and it's what they call, I think, a slipping yoke or slip yoke or something, I don't know. But basically there's a spline no, shaft. Slipknot, that's a band. Slip, no, yeah, not yeah, slipknot, slip not, not okay. slipknot. But there's a, a spline shaft in here that moves in and out a little bit. And you want this to be ideally in the middle of its motion, of its range of motion. Oh, that looks so close. But it looks super close. Like this is right in the middle and it's like almost right up against it. So we don't have the bracing yet to actually hold the diff in place and weld the brackets and whatnot. Um, they're still on the way over here, but I can tell this diff is so large. It just like barely fits in this cavity. So sliding this diff all the way forward until it presses against the chassis and all the way backwards until it presses against the subframe is about two inches. I think we're gonna have an inch and a half or so of room on the drive shaft. I think we're good. There's, there's no way this drive shaft doesn't fit since the diff can only move two inches forward or two inches back. If you've been watching the channel a while, you remember when we put these coilovers in, we etched in our logo on the coilover. Still there, still holding up, a little dirty. It's got dirt from 48 states on it, but still there and that makes me happy. Double A-arm wishbone thing. We're still waiting on parts delivery to finish up the rear diff swap, but we're not just doing a diff change. There's a lot of refinement that I want to do, and that refinement has turned us to the engine bay. The first order of business is to remove the catch can. It's kind of one reason, especially up by us, whenever I see a catch can on a street car, I immediately warn them about the side effects of running that catch can. So this is the catch can that was in this car and we're removing it because when I put this in there initially, we thought, well, it's a turbo K-series. K-series, they're not turbo from the factory. So it's probably gonna have a lot of blow by. So I put this thing in here. It looks so happy. <laughs> but we don't really need it. It's a street car and uh, this thing is not even full. So there's nothing really in it. It's also a vent to atmosphere, meaning that all of the oil soot and stuff kind of comes out. And that's why my engine bay is so dirty. And I mean, you can tell just by looking at the can, how much soot is coming out of this thing. So we're gonna remove it, a little bit of weight reduction, a little bit of more space in the engine bay. Maybe we'll replace it with like a really small catch can in the future, but for now, we'll just get rid of it. We're also gonna remove the intake manifold because I wanna clean up the look of the engine bay, but I also wanna replace the S2000 throttle body. S2000 intake manifolds are for an F-series engine, 
which means that I have to use an adapter to get it to fit on my K-series. So glad that we can finally remove that now and simplify things. I've chosen the K-Power rear-wheel drive K-Swap manifold. It flows well, looks clean, and it'll support K-Series throttle bodies. So I'll have a new selection of options to use. But really, what it boils down to is that the fitment is so much nicer. Performance, it's really not gonna be significant, um, especially with a boosted car. It's, it's probably no difference. The only, the only thing nice with this is because we don't have some adapters, there's less chances of like boost leaks and stuff. So I guess in that terms, it could be some, some advantages performance-wise. Unfortunately, we do still need an adapter for the coolant passage on our head to fit the RX-7 chassis. So we'll need to cut off the end bits of this intake manifold to make it all fit. Looks like some work has been done on this subframe previously. There's these metal tabs here that somebody just MIG welded on. I don't know if they had a different rear diff set up in here. Definitely not the Explorer rear diff. Um, and they never painted this, so it's just straight rust. So we're gonna cut these tabs out for weight reduction reasons, because it's a pretty big tab, but also it doesn't need to be there. So let's clean it up and make it more like it was supposed to be. seems like hours of spark throwing, the subframe is finally cleaned up. Now to move on to the next item. Switching everything over to the new K-Series intake manifold setup means different accessories as well. So we will need a new fuel rail, fuel lines, and new vacuum line routing and map sensor. Side by side, obviously you can see a huge difference between these manifolds. The main reason I'm going for this is to kind of clean everything up, but also it helps give me a little bit more clearance. You can see the throttle body position is a bit higher on this one or off to the right on this one, which means we'll be able to fit this bigger throttle body, uh, which is drive by wire and a bunch of other reasons. But most notably, I like how clean this one looks. I mean, can you blame me? A nice clean black K-tuned fuel rail, which is overkill. We could, we could probably get by with a stock rail, but this thing you feed in through the middle and there's a little gauge that goes on it and sticks up so you can see the fuel pressure from the top. And it's nice and clean so there's no fuel lines running everywhere in both directions. It just kind of sits there. Boom. Done. Clean. from our feed source, and then the other side's gonna go back to the fuel pressure regulator. And then, so both have to kind of go back down to the same spot. So I guess we'll go back and remount the fuel pressure regulator, figure out what fittings fit best on that side. And then once all the fittings are kind of in, then it's just a matter of running the line through, measuring it, cutting it, putting it, assembling the hose.
don't have all the parts and we're waiting for a few things to show up. We're gonna just kind of look over the car, check everything over, see if we can find anything else wrong. Uh, yeah, I mean, this car's been literally all over the country, I think, since its last real service. Um, probably a good idea to just check everything over, make sure all the bolts are tight, loose, or make sure, make sure they're not loose. And uh, yeah, so far everything looks pretty good. Yeah, one of the bolts to the adapter plate looks like it may be backed out. It's kind of a good idea to remote mount a lot of these sensors off of the engine so they're not exposed to so many harmonics and vibrations, especially some of the vital sensors or some of these sensors that when they fail, they'll leave a mess. And an oil mess next to a hot turbo could be a bad thing. I thought this might have been leaking, but I think it was mostly just the power steering. Just a little forehand stainless steel hose for the oil pressure sensor. Looking over the car further, and we found what looks like a leak on the electric power steering pump. It, I think it's the seal, like the O-ring inside um, the reservoir or something, it leaks. Electric power steering pump. Uh, we use this because we really didn't have a place to run the hydraulic power steering off the engine in this car, uh, but Ben wanted still power steering. So this is kind of the easy solution. Um, it's kind of a, a common thing on a lot of other cars, swap cars. If you want power steering, you don't have a way to run it. You just run an electric power steering pump. Um, and this one happens to be from a Mercedes, or sorry, no, a Volvo uh, C30. And it's pretty easy to, to hook up. It's essentially just a power ground, and then you have one signal wire, and it activates the pump. It doesn't seem to leak. Okay, so we got one of three, two of three. This one's unrelated to this shipment, so we're missing three of three out of the rear diff swap kit. Yeah, and I think we're missing the most important piece, which is the uh, rear diff cradle mount. Yeah. There's still time in the day. Might show up. Okay, well, you throw this in, right? Got it. It looks like we've got the final piece that we need to finish off the drive-by wire throttle body. One of the uh, things we wanted to swap out on the RX-7 was the valve cover. Um, two reasons here. Mostly, the stock baffling on the, the K-Series valve covers are very good. Um, I, I see all the time there's people that will weld bungs on the side of it. Um, the problem is, when you do that, it doesn't actually um, tap into the inside baffle. So, Honda engineers did their research. They have this baffled really well if you use the actual OEM uh, breathers. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the OEM setup. Uh, we've ran it on several cars that we've done case swaps with, especially even turbo builds, and they're, they, they work perfectly fine. Second and most important reason we're swapping this valve cover is that. Yeah, this is actually engraved into the valve cover. So they had to actually put this on a... Is this what you do for only like your top tier builds? Your, your, the really nope. signature products with ASM on it? No, this is for sale on our website. You saw how much it would cost, right? You're getting a bill. 
Man, with the valve cover off, the top of the head actually all looks really clean. Probably because we use Valvoline. <laughs> no, seriously though, all of this would normally be a little bit more brown if you are neglecting to do oil changes frequently or whatnot. Um, but Valvoline stuff has really kept this all really clean. I mean, honestly, this, the top of this engine still looks brand new. The reason we didn't go with an OEM cover in the first place was because of this, which is right on the back side of the valve cover, which goes right into the firewall on a rear wheel drive car. And on K-Tune, we just have these little plugs here. We plug it off, pull the baffle from the side. Um, the issue is that the side baffles aren't as effective as this back baffle. So we've got to figure out how to make that rear baffle work. Andy is cutting off the factory port for the PCV so we can tap in a lower profile fitting that will clear the RX-7 firewall. Unfortunately, that means metal shavings and we can't let that get into the oil. So we have to take apart the factory baffling to make sure that we clean up all those metal shavings. Before we clean up the metal shavings though, Andy taps the head to bolt the baffle back on. So everything looks good. Now it says it says Honda on top, so you can't get confused. Some people, when I pop the engine, they get confused. Not anymore. Uh, obviously, this K Miata intake manifold looks way cleaner. Big fan of that look, that aesthetic with the K-tuned fuel rail. And we have an electronic throttle body, which I don't know if we've talked about that too much in this video, but um, this is a Bosch electronic throttle body. We're converting the car over to drive-by wire um, because the pedal that I had in it before it was an S2000 uh, throttle body and I think there was some warping going on to it uh, from just where they welded on the vibrant HD clamps on there or the previous guy that had the car did. Uh, throttle plate was a little sticky so I'm converting it over to drive by wire and now the throttle won't be sticky because it's controlled by electronics um, and also we can do some other really cool stuff in the tune with that um, and also future proofing for maybe some future plans that we have with this car. Um, just kind of cleaning everything up, making it better to drive. That's the, the name of the game for this whole trip here is to refine this car and make it better to drive. Not that it's bad to drive, but now it's better. Bushings, some bracketry. This is the bar. Yeah. So this is the the front support bar, billet stubs. Yeah. Holy crap! Oh. So we have all of this stuff. We have the axles. We have the front cross member bar. We have the billet hubs. We have extended studs. We have bushings. You know what we don't have? the bracket for the back of the diff. You know what's the first step on installing all this stuff? The bracket for the back of the diff. So these are the rear diff mount rubber, not the front mount diff rubber, which we've been... Which we're waiting for as well. Yeah, we've been chasing all around town for that. Probably not gonna get here until next week, if we can even find it. There's one Ford dealership in Georgia that we have found that has it, and they don't wanna sell it. It's a discontinued part. I tried ordering some from a place that said they had them in stock, and my order got canceled. So he found the Ford dealer that was, what, like called all around everywhere to yeah. find some and like beg for them to overnight them. Yep. And we're still waiting to hear back to pay $200 for two rubber bushings. Lovely. Back to a waiting game? Yeah, you wanna go throw some snowballs at each other? Okay. okay. Wanna build a snowman? Yeah. No, <laughs> you're gonna run it over. <laughs>
You hit my car! Ah! <laughs> Unfortunately, we've reached a point in this build where we can no longer continue, and it's not because of anything that we can do, we're waiting on parts. It's not any shipping company's fault, it's not any specific company's fault, it's just we don't have the parts that we need to continue. As we're getting into the build, we're looking at things and realizing, oh, we need you know, this part, that part, this, and so we're ordering stuff as soon as we can, but obviously we don't have them, and some places ship a lot slower than others, so we're stuck. Um, this is just how builds go sometimes, even on YouTube, even when we try our best to coordinate everything ahead of time. I planned out this build two months earlier, and yet here we are. So I'm just, I'm gonna drive home, and then I'll come back maybe a week from now. But this is kind of how builds go, and uh, we're no different than you are. We, we're waiting on parts just like you do, and unfortunately this is the point in the build where we can't continue. So until, the next episode, which will probably be the next episode for you, uh, we'll uh, we'll see you next time.